what was the concept behind this cigar? Okay, you know, we could have gone to um, Nicaragua and said, okay, let's make a, uh, an inch. Um, but there was a lot more thought that was put into this because I wanted, you know, this inch to be different than the other twos. Correct. So we have the three different inches. Um, and what I wanted with this cigar, I've always have a, um, you know, I've always had a, a, how can I put this? A, back in, you know, many years ago, I used to drink bourbon. Mm -hmm. And there was a certain, I wouldn't say heat, but a certain thing that you felt in the palate because of the alcohol or whatever. Right. I used to dig uh, wild turkey 100%. Mm -hmm. And with this cigar, from the moment you light it up, you feel, even if you're not retrohaling, you're feeling the oh, stress, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're feeling the spice, and look at the eyes. <laughs> yeah. So I said to myself, you know, I could probably make this cigar, but I want to do it with somebody else that I respect, that I think, you know, they're, they're one of the uh, greatest cigar tobacco family in the world, which is the Placencia family. Right. So we started talking about this maybe, I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I started talking to, uh, you know, Nestor Andre about this cigar. Um, and let's say, okay, let's, let's start, you know, making blends. Let's start trying the different tobaccos that you had. I went down there, I looked at all their tobacco. Well, you were there with me. And uh, we finally, after about, I don't know, I have to say a year, <clears throat> you know, we finally hit of the, the blend that I was looking for. Right. And this is an old Nicaraguan mm -hmm. tobacco. It's all their tobacco. Which incidentally, I, you know, we use a lot of the tobaccos in some of our blends also. Right. Right. And what I was looking for this in cigar was that, you know, from the moment you light it, it hits you. Right. And <clears throat> it just keeps building, you know? It does. It's not gonna go milder in the middle, it's not gonna, you know, it's gonna keep going all the way through. And believe me, it, it, it's, it, it, it's a lot of um, experimentations. You know, going back, let's put half a leaf of this, let's put a leaf of that, let's try this. We went back and forth for a while. Oh yeah, you and, did. And finally, <laughs> and finally, you know, we got to this and it's uh, been very successful. Yeah. Well, and it's it's interesting. So two things about Inch Nicaragua that, that are very unique. So one, it's it's our, at the moment, only 100% Nicaraguan big ring gauge cigar. All right. Um, <clears throat> we decided to do this cigar and keep the 70 out of it, leaving right. the 70 as part of the natural and the Maduro line. So this really only comes in the three sizes of 60, 62, and 64. Right. But what I found very unique was when you first told me about this, that you were like, no, I want to go make this with someone else. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? Because, you know, Inch has been your brainchild, your baby, your, your preeminent, like, the the masterpiece of all the years of making the big ring gauge, you know, from going back to when you used to do it as a private label, which we know you did at one point for a biker group out in California. Right. Then the idea about you did some other ones and you were playing with it. And then, you know, in your prior company, bringing out Siri R, you know, and, and literally turning the industry on its nose because they were like, big ring gauge, who's, nobody's gonna smoke that. Well, here it is to stay, yep. you know. Um, you know, so you take this, you, you, you've worked 10 years ago and perfected the natural and the Maduro, and here we are 10 years later launching the third version in the Nicaragua, and you go outside to another maker. Right. You know, so my first question to you is, when you think about that, did you second guess yourself at all? Did you kind of go, wait a minute, am, am, I, am I crazy to do this? Am I gonna really trust somebody else with my baby? Well, I, you know, I, I trust them because I know, the, you know, I've known them for, you know, many years. No. Yeah. And I know the kind of work that they do. No. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that, um, you know, that really sold me when I went down there uh, was, you know, the, the organization that they have, you know, yeah. the setup that they have. Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's, it's among, one of the best that I've seen, the, yeah. the amount of tobaccos that they yeah. have. Uh, the fact that they said, um, you know, we're gonna pick, you know, these cigar makers for you. Right. And I was there, we were looking, you know, I saw, I gave, you know, whatever <clears throat> feedback I thought um, 
I needed to give, mm -hmm. and they were open and receptive to it. And uh, you know, we, I worked with um, uh, Nestor Andrea. I worked with Moises, mm -hmm. who was the uh, head of uh, production and, and mm -hmm. quality control on there. And it was a great, uh, you know, great experience for me to go outside, you know, the factory and see how they work. You know, there's, yeah. there's different, you know, they have a little bit different style than, than I do, but I had to adjust right. to get the, the cigar that I wanted to get. Yeah. And they were receptive to it. Yeah. And, you know, everyone, it's funny because I gave them a, 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 a uh, you know, the weights, you know, we yeah. weigh all our cigars in grams. And, and, you know, I get there one day and they say, that, you know, we have this problem. I said, what, what, what's the problem? He says, well, you know, on this particular cigar, it's a gram above the others that you mentioned. And I said, okay, so what's the problem? Well, you know, we don't want that. I said, no, no, no. And, and this is the truth. I said, look, there's a tolerance. Correct. You know, two grams over, two grams under, you're, not, you're never going to have a problem. Right. Now, if we're talking about five, six grams. Right. But these people, they came to me and they said, look, we have this, you know, we want, you know, we want your, 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 your okay, your blessing on this. I said, look, we smoked the cigar. I said, there's, there's nothing. <sighs> so these people were really um, um, committed to making this cigar the way that I wanted to make it and, and making it the success that it is today. So let's talk about the tobaccos that are in this one. Mm -hmm. So it's 100% Nicaragua. Right. All right. And my understanding is, is when you went down to see Nestor Andreas and, and you sat there and you guys started this conversation, he sort of gave you, it wasn't probably 100%, unless you tell me it was, that he sort of gave you carte blanche to go and pick certain tobacco that you wanted to work with. Exactly. And you started working on blends. Right. So what did you land on here? Because obviously, I mean, we know it's all Nicaraguan, but... What are the regions from Nicaragua? Well, this has tobaccos from, um, you know, the, the wrapper is from Jalapa, mm -hmm. and the fillers are predominantly Esteli, Jalapa, and Condeira, and different, uh, again, in different uh, proportions. And the binder? And the binder is also from uh, uh, from Nicaragua. That I'm not going to say because... I <laughs> okay, so it's a Nicaraguan binder. We'll it's, keep it secret yeah, with that we'll one. Keep that. That's no a, problem. That's really one uh, Every the, once in a while, that's chef what, can't that's, tell what the secret sauce is. No, I can't give you, you know, I, I can give you a little bit, but, you know, how much salt I put in it or how much sugar or how much uh, whatever, you know, that's, yeah. uh, that's going a little bit over the... Uh, exactly. My grandmother would do the same thing. She'd tell yeah. me how to make the dish, it, but never tell me the magic touch. Funny <laughs> we use, uh, we, we tried it with um, three different brightness. Yeah. And this one, you know, from this particular area was the one that really... Uh, Perfect. And Perfect. also, what we worked on here also is the seeds, you know. Mm. Mm. That's one thing that a lot of people, you know, you say, well, you we grow tobaccos from, you know, <clears throat> Nicaragua, Dominica, or whatever. But there are different seeds. There's Habano seeds, there's <clears throat> Corojo seeds, there's um, Criollo seeds, there's, you know, Pelo, you know, all kinds of seeds. Yeah. So that's also very important. Yeah. And... One of the things that makes a cigar unique, even though it's being grown in the same area, whether it's, you know, Dominican or Nicaragua, Honduras, is the seed and the soil where it's grown. Absolutely. And Nestor definitely, being the king of tobacco farms in the world, you know, right. he's got the variety for what you need. So let's talk flavor on this thing. Mm -hmm. Would you agree that it's the fullest expression out of the three? I, I think it's, how can I put this? I think, to me, the Sumatra has its own identity, as does the, uh, the, uh, the broad leaf. This Habano is, is like, a, what I was looking for was more of a, not a full, full strength, you know, uh, knock you on your butt cigar, but something that had a lot of flavors, you know, more creaminess, but had something that was predominant, uh, noticeable in the palate, yeah. you know? And in the nose. Well, I can tell you, for me, that when I retrohaled in Nicaragua, it's the strongest of the retrohales. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's our fullest expression. It's stronger. Yeah. But to me, the Sumatra has more spice. I would say that there's probably more pepper in the retrohale on the re yeah. But this, when you retrohale, it's like an explosion of flavors and strength through exactly. your whole retrohale. Exactly. You know? Exactly. <clears throat> so you have, you know, you have. Three different... Yeah, they're three unique cigars. Exactly. They're totally different profiles exactly. and flavors. So let's say you're a, a, a smoker that likes a, a, a cigar that's maybe, you know, medium or, you know, with flavor. And you, you go for the Maduro. You like something with more spice, you know, uh, or more pepper. 
uh, you know, you go with the natural, you like something that, you know, like this, that's like, like more of a powerhouse, then this yeah. would be the cigar. Right, and I do agree it's more of a powerhouse of a cigar. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna ask you one last question to wrap up our conversation, <clears throat> which is just a little anecdotal note. When you and I went down the last time after Nicaragua was made, we already had shipped the boxes, everything was all done, and we were there the very last time. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember you and, uh, you and Nestor talking, and Nestor made a comment to me. He goes, you know, we had to have a meeting of the minds due to the way we construct versus the way you construct cigars. Right. You know, and I find that to be very interesting that you mentioned that, you know, in that process, there was a little bit of a, a quote-unquote learning lesson on both parts, yours and his, that you had to understand what he did and they had to tailor slightly to what you normally like to do. Right. And one of the things that I just want you to comment on real quickly is, you know, it's very impressive to me that that relationship exists where you can walk into a factory like the Placencia factory where we make the Inch Nicaragua and you can have that conversation with them and that respect level exists and that that uniqueness exists that they're willing to let you kind of guide them to keep our production process very similar to what we do in the Dominican. Right. You know, and if you were to describe that whole process in one or two words, what would you say to the consumer that they need to know that even though we're not technically making this, it's almost like saying we grew a third appendage, a third arm, <laughs> and it's being made for us the way we normally make if it was done at TLA. <clears throat> and and that's, that's, that's key because there's a, a mutual respect, yeah. you know. Um, there's a mutual respect, um, and they know that, you know, I'm not gonna go in there and, and do something that in any way or means is, is going to, uh, um, you know, not, I, I would say benefit them because, you know, they, they have so much things going on that, uh, you know, they're doing this for us and, and, and they're very proud. Yeah. You know, that was important to me, you know. And, and Nestor told me, he said, man, you know, this, this is really a, a great, you know, not only for you, but for us also. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, we're learning and I'm learning from you guys, you're learning from me, and it's a mutual respect that we have. Yeah. Um, and like I said, they have their own, set of, of uh, cigar makers, their own group, I should say, and those are, you know, just making that cigar for us. Cool. And, you know, the thing is, when we started uh, doing this, you know, uh, we weren't, you know, we weren't expecting the, the, uh, the amount of acceptance and, and, and demand that there is for now, you yeah. know, even in Europe, mm -hmm. it's grown tremendously, you know, mm -hmm. here in the States, it's really doing great, uh, the whole line is, oh. but, um, so that was that. That to me uh, showed me that this were people I wanted to work with because they're humble, and even though they're probably the biggest, you know, tobacco growers and, and cigar makers in the world, there's still that that humility and that humbleness on their part to where I can come in and say, you know, Absolutely. let's do it this way. Absolutely. And I think that has to do a lot with you know years that we know each other and the respect that we have for each other. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you for taking the time to go through Inch with me, and you thank know, you. hopefully, our consumers learn a lot today. Hopefully, and uh, you know, I would say, um, I would say that uh, uh, you know, this to me is 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 something that the Inch is something that's you know very special to me uh, because of the fact that you know many years ago I decided to come out with this this, you know, 60 ring gauge <laughs> that, uh, you know, not everybody has a 60 ring gauge. Exactly, it's no longer a small cigar. It's, it's not as small, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. And uh, so it's, it's um, I'm proud of, this, of these lines. Perfect, thank you. Thank you.